This is immigration lawyer Latoya McBean Pompey in Long Island, New York. In this video, I'm going to be speaking and answering the questions that I've received from numerous people on YouTube about the F2A category being current and whether or not they can go ahead and adjust their status. Well, basically, the question is whether they can file the I-485 now, even though their I-130 has not been approved yet. So that's what we're going to talk about. Now, friends, I'd like for you to comment below and tell me, are you filing for adjustment of status? And if so, what is the problem that you've encountered with your filing so far? Or what's the number one question that you have concerning adjustment of status? Put your comment below so that I could review it later on and then I can address it in upcoming videos. Let's get right to it. A few months ago, the government announced that the F2A family preference category is current and everyone was like, yay, awesome. I can now come to America or I can now adjust my status and people were so excited. Videos were flying all over YouTube from lawyers saying good news, great news, excited news. But now that folks have had a couple of months to really think about whether or not this means anything for them, they're encountering some issues, some questions. And so some people come in to meet with me in a consultation to talk about their questions because friends, it gets a little complex when you're here in the US and you're trying to adjust your status. So the issue that a lot of people here in the US is encountering is this issue of whether they are eligible to adjust their status. So yes, F2A is current. And for those of you who are out there who are eligible to adjust your status, meaning you're here in the US and you meet the eligibility requirements to adjust your status, you can certainly file the I-485 right away. There is no need to wait. Whereas previously, folks in the F2A category faced a backlog of 18 to 24 months. That's not the case anymore now that F2A is current. By the way, if you don't know what F2A is, F2A is the second family preference category for people who are green card holders petitioning for their spouse or, and, or children under the age of 21 who are unmarried. What's happening is now that F2A is current, folks can concurrently file the I-130 petition and the I-485 petition at the same time. If you've already filed the I-130 and you're just waiting, you can now file the I-45. You could put that in. Now, you know, you're being treated as if you're an immediate relative of a U.S. citizen, but you're not. It's just that the F2A category is now current. But friends, did the government really open the floodgates here? Come on. Come on. You guys know. You guys should know, based on the trends that we've been seeing under the Trump administration, that they're not trying to make this easier for anyone. So here's the situation with the F2A category. And those of you who are here in the US who are trying to adjust your status, you have to remember that you must be eligible and that there should not be any issues of inadmissibility standing in your way. And so the common scenario that I'm hearing and seeing from my consultations and from some questions that you guys send me is, you know, my green card holder husband filed for me and F2A is current and I'd like to adjust my status. But then when I dig a little deeper, I learn that the wife actually overstayed and therefore she is not eligible to adjust her status because under our law, the law says you are not eligible to adjust your status if you are one of these people. Okay. And it's a longer list, but I've just chosen three areas that most people fall into. These are the people who are not eligible. Any foreign national who is not in lawful immigration status on the date of filing his or her adjustment of status application. Secondly, any foreign national who has ever failed 
to continuously maintain a lawful status since entry into the US. Next, any foreign national who has ever violated the terms of his or her non-immigrant visa. And so friends, if you've overstayed or if you have any violations on your record, your immigration record, and you're married to a green card holder, you actually are not eligible to adjust your status. Back up just a little bit here. You know, we're not talking about immediate relatives of U.S. citizens. If you're an immediate relative of a U.S. citizen, this video does not apply to you. You are eligible, obviously, to adjust your status. If you entered with inspection, if you were admitted properly and you've overstayed, you can adjust your status. But for those of you who are married to a green card holder, not so for you. There's no exception for you, which is why people are now encountering problems as they are now thinking about applying for adjustment of status. The way is through an unlawful presence waiver, which I've talked about in previous videos, unlawful presence waiver. The thing about it is that you must have a qualifying relative, right, for this unlawful presence waiver. And you do. Your green card holder spouse is your qualifying relative. But you must ask yourself whether your spouse will suffer extreme hardship if he or she if, if you have to go back to your country, right, and certainly he or she has to go with you, there will be extreme hardship and you have to prove that to the government. So if the answer is yes, you're able to prove that your spouse will suffer extreme hardship, right, if you have to go back home, you can then proceed with filing the I-601A waiver. You file that waiver after you get that I-130 approval. So here's the three-step process. You file the I-130 first and you get that approval. Secondly, you file the I-601A waiver of unlawful presence. Once that is approved, then you can proceed with consular processing, which is the third step which means you'll have to get on a plane and go back home and be interviewed at a U.S. embassy overseas for your immigrant visa. That is the pathway for those of you who are married to a green card holder and you have violated the terms of your six months past that I-94 date. That's all I'm going to share in this video, friends. I will review your comments below. Again, the questions that I'm posing to you in this video that I'd like for you to comment about is whether you have filed for adjustment of status and what was the biggest problem you faced uh, during your filing process, or you know, what's your number one question about the adjustment of status process. I'd be happy to answer that for you in another live video. Friends, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to McDean Immigration TV. Get on my email list. The link is in this post as well. Just a few days ago, I sent out a great email about the public charge bond, and I broke down what that bond is and how it's posted and what the amount is and who must pay it. So get on my email list so that you can get juicy information such as that. Friends, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.